Hey guys, welcome back to another review here on the Foundry. We got the next episode of Miss Marvel. We got episode four, Seeing Red, and we got the oh. whole gang. We got Johnny, we got Tony. What's going on, guys? You Hello. For episode four. Yeah, dude. I'm so ready to rate this episode. It's yeah. Uh, what? You didn't like it? <laughs> I like the episode. It might be my favorite episode. I think I was gonna say it's my favorite. Yeah, look at that. This is a this good episode. Good. Yeah. Ken, it was, did you... it was the get away from home episode. Go on an adventure kind of kind of a thing. Which it kinda came out of nowhere too. I was just like, okay, they're just straight up going to Pakistan, right? This was yeah. the most unrealistic thing so far. She has powers, I can <laughs> believe that. Getting on a flight and immediately going to another country on such short notice and not worrying about school and all that shit. Very unrealistic. Yeah, it <laughs> is. Superhero. Do you really think you have to worry about school? Come on, Ken. And she's no a senior, else, too. No. Like, and someone like her mom, like, being like, is going to be super straight. Like, oh, you're going to fuck up your grades and you're going to ruin your chance know, of being exactly. able to get into a good college and stuff. I can't that was pretty she wild. Went, she went with it. They just cut from the last episode, and this episode, we're just flying already. Yeah. We don't know how much time's gone yeah, by or how much she needed to convince like, yeah, let's her. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah. Like, her, okay. Let's <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> obviously uh, her mom was like very angry and stuff like that about the wedding being ruined and and whatnot because of her. But we we don't know directly she was connected, but but they were blaming her pretty much about it. So and they yeah, uh, they, they pretty much yes they, they have, have a truce. truce. Okay, exactly. Um, so oh, it was a uh, I, I like this episode a lot. A lot of action. I'd say this episode had the most action. Um, we figured out some more about the the different universe, the Nor universe or reality, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, and a little bit about uh, a little bit more about her grandmother, or Which... well, her great grandmother Aisha, um, mm -hmm. to some degree, because uh, she actually finally has an in person conversation with her grandma about mm -hmm. it, and and the fact that she knew she was uh, a djinn all along and <laughs> didn't say anything. Uh, that was kind of funny. She was like, "You knew, and you didn't say anything." Yeah, I, I enjoyed the uh, the grandma and the mom like relationship. Them kind of like getting yeah. back to it and like kind of bonding again. I, I thought that was pretty pretty good too. Yep, I like all, I like all the culture stuff too. Like they're actually showing us. I, was I mean, I hope they're representing everything. The like, stuff. yeah, I I'd assume it's well represented. Hopefully, like, yeah. I wouldn't know better. Same. To be honest, but like based on how they're doing it and kind of some of my minimal knowledge it seems like it's doing a good job so i hope so i hope so because like you don't see like a lot of like cultural representation like uh, that in other like mainstream media and it's really uh -huh. good because assuming like younger audiences are going to be watching it too and it's good to be exposed to other people's cultures and get informed and stuff and that's yeah. what kind of irritates me people saying it's like pc sjw bullshit but it's like what's wrong with the culture being accurately represented it's like with why is that? Yeah, like, no, it's like know, what's wrong with that? And everyone's like, it's stupid. It's like, why though? Yeah, it's like cool. Like, like, like all like a bunch of us have like we don't have like interesting stories of when we moved here. It's been so long ago, but like, yeah, a everyone at some point moved to America. They're mm -hmm. all from somewhere else, right? So like, yeah, this right. is just a more recent, you know, set of people that have moved to America. So it's like exactly it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know, like. It, it, it is interesting, yeah, and, it's, and it can be relatable for some people, too, and I think that's very important that uh, when you're younger, you look for relatable things in media to you and your family and your current situation in life, and for something like that to be shown, uh, people are going to see it, and, like, people create idols, even with Kamala Khan and, like, Captain Marvel, like, Carol Danvers, like, that's her idol and stuff, and she relates to her, and, and I think it's say, pretty good. And it transfers into the, like, real life between the actors as well, because that's really what happens with her, they created the Marvel comic, which for her she became a fan because it related with her and like her heritage and nationality or whatever, and then like yeah, it's like it ties in the real world and with the show. Like it's a very interesting, you know. It's inspirational like to the characters in the show, it's like a story a st like perspective, and then also like to the viewer, you know, because the story behind the scenes, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Like someone could be watching it now that's like a child of like that nationality that relates with that, and then they'll be the next Miss Marvel when we're in our forties. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or it could be someone of a completely different nationality. You know, just like how um, Carol Danvers and Kamal Khan are quite like different from each other in their appearance, or from their territory and region and religion as well. They're also so different, but just deep down, maybe she relates to her from. You know, from a different from a surface level. 
Yeah, like, and I mean, it could be relatable for anyone that's moved to America, really. I mean, like, they, there's one part where she's with her, her cousins, and they're, like, going around some of the streets and whatever, and, like, one of the, one of them says, uh, I don't remember what exactly the comment was, but something about uh, her being an, uh, an ABCD American-born confused Desi or something. That's funny. And I thought that was very interesting, because she, like, it, it seems pretty clear that she, she doesn't feel like she fits in in America or here, even though she's part of both, but she's like, because she's a mix of both, she doesn't really feel like she fit, fits in, in like fully in either area. And so I thought that was kind of interesting um, overall. I like, I like the, uh, the differences they show between, between it. Um, at some point in the episode, she, she meets a friend and whatnot. She hangs out with a friend. And I, they were kind of, there was like a quiet moment and they kind of look around a campfire and you could see it and look like she finally found a place where she could fit in. And I really like that for her because like she just has never been able to fit anywhere. She always makes her mom mad. Even the Majima, Najima girl that she had, like she trusted for five seconds, even turned her back on her, even Kamran, you know, just misplaced her trust there too. And her high school life and everything. She's an outcast and a nerd. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And she was able to put on her baby sloth like persona there too, as well, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was kind of funny. Um, yeah, yep. and it felt very real. Like it felt like that's <laughs> like <laughs> the, the whole interaction of what's your nickname? And she said what it was, baby sloth. And then, like originally, that dude was like, kind of like you know, like you know, chuckling, like oh, that's a kind of a silly name. But one of the other ones was like, oh, that's a cool name. And then she makes the comment of, see, someone appreciates it. I, yeah. That just feels like exactly what that conversation should have gone like. Because I could see that that, it just felt like an actual. Yeah, it felt, it felt Not good. Stupid For Marvel real. joke or something. Yeah, it was yeah. good. It just makes me smile at the end of the day, too, just thinking about it. It's like, it's, it's not. A conversation. It feels like genuine and real. Mm -hmm. That's what I think the show is very good about being genuine and being real. And it feels like so effortless, too. That's yeah, it's yeah. just impressive stuff. Um, anyway, yeah, she did a little bit of exploring and stuff, and she wanted to go to the train track specifically because that's where she saw her little vision, and she was going to do some investigating, and she saw this random guy. I did not catch his name, though. Uh, I got his boss's name, I guess. His was, yeah, from the, the what's the name of the, like the, the Red uh, Daggers. The, the Red, Red Daggers. Dagger guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what was his name? Uh... Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember his name. I just called him Kid. <laughs> Kid and Kamal yeah. work well together. My name's Tex. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <Daniel. laughs> um, uh, yeah, so... Uh, and we saw a little flashback. Not a flashback. just kind of transitioned randomly back home. And you see uh, Najima. Uh, she breaks out of prison. I like some Supermax prison thing. And with her, with her gaggle of guys. And she's like deliberately leaves her son behind because he betrayed her. And I thought, I was like, damn, dude. Yeah, I was kind of harsh. Yeah. Oh, bitch. Uh, but, yeah, uh, so we get to see a little bit of Kamala Khan uh, working with the Red Daggers and learning a little bit about the uh, different universe. and The Noor. Uh, Walid, uh, his name is, I, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah he... Sure. <laughs> That's the boss of the kid who, who was training them and stuff. And there's a little bit of training going on. He's like just kind of drops information and... She just, like, kind of absorbs everything. She doesn't really question anything. And, like, after the Najima thing, you think she'd be like, maybe I shouldn't trust you. But he's like, this is what's going on, and this is why, and they're bad. It's, it's like, a secret base. How do you not? Yeah. yeah she's like, seems legit. <laughs> yeah, she's just, like, kind of, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Was it wasn't, I was just kind of like, sure, like, I'm on for the ride. Like, just like she is at this point. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, out of fucking nowhere. Uh, Najima just drops through like a pane of glass, and she like at the secret base, and that was, that was a little sus. That that yeah. me out for a sec, for sure. I was like, uh, a weird, a yeah, it was a weird like uh, chase scene. I I like the chase scene like through the streets of the city and everything. It was really cool. Um, yeah, there were definitely some. <laughs> this show has like some awkward CGI moments, like the part where they kill the boss dude and he falls felt super awkward like he fell way too fast yeah like, they clearly cgi'd his body to fall down because it's easier than actually doing the stunt which is 
fair. That that makes I sense. If they had but him on just, lines and they just sped up the scene as he drops slower. It just felt super awkward. I don't was, know. That sometimes the fight scenes are kind of weird in this show. Um, Overall, it was okay, but there was just a couple parts. It was like, oh, that was... That was okay. Whenever <laughs> Nijima stabbed him, it was like he was made of sand. It just like, I expected blood, but it was just like nothing. I'm like, okay, like whatever. <laughs> it's a kid show, yeah. Yeah, I guess. But like... He's like foam. That's a foam person. I guess, yeah, right before like he fucking throws a kunai and yeah. kills a guy. But yeah, her, her goons were dropping <laughs> left and right, dude. Like they were getting just murdered. I was like, god damn. He like into one of them too with his, one of the trucks. <laughs> he just like floored it into him and then just like stopped on a dime. I was like, holy shit. Like... Yeah, it was pretty wild. She must have seen him right there. Like, she must have intended to run into him because there's no way you accidentally run into a dude like that. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. Uh, but uh, oh, there was there was a I point where there was uh, a scene I was gonna mention earlier. Oh, um, yeah, we went well, over just you... kind of over a lot of stuff, but not a lot was super important. I thought. No, I think you already mentioned like the the, the mom and the grandma kind mm -hmm. of interacting and kind of understanding each other a little bit more so. yeah open it up yeah i think that's kind of where the oh no the the last bit of this episode was wild <laughs> oh yeah so the dude gives her some fabric did we mention yeah that, that was the red the red dagger thing yeah he yeah. he gave her some fabric it was like this has been like through the ringer like our group i guess <laughs> like what are they what are they rebels against can I ask? Do you guys know? I guess the the clandestines. I guess they're like yeah. the opposition, uh, but they're also interdimensional people. Yeah, like it, they're kind of. I don't know. They were kind of vague with that, but also they just are in Pakistan. But then why are like the clandestines in America? I'm assuming they just got to that location, in America, because Comron was the newest kid at school. Oh right, but it's like, why are the Red Daggers just there though? Why aren't they in America? I don't know. That's, if Maybe that's like just their base of operations. enemies, you know? Yeah, you're right. Well, they though. have connections all over, I would Mis imagine. Yeah, I don't, I don't. we just don't know a lot about them, and... Connections of dying real fast. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's just half the group just got wiped out in one episode. Hey, dude, well, he took no, all the mom at once, to yeah. be fair. <laughs> Not the dead daggers. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but then uh, there was a little fight with uh, Najima and... Um, Kamala and she actually got her bracelet stabbed and she woke up in a train track surrounded by people in probably like 30 40 years ago um and there was some kind of massive evacuation going on and everything and it was definitely a, like a blast from the past so it's like she got trapped and I don't know if she was like knocked out or what happened but that's where the episode dropped off but it was yeah, pretty like, insane again with the cliffhangers mm -hmm. I imagine it's the partition story that they had about the trains and leaving and getting on the last exactly one, but it's unclear how this connects and if this is just a dream or a vision or, or what um it's very interesting uh so far i know like, it is i like oh I yeah like how this all yeah. is uh is progressing so far it's keeping there enough mystery that i'm still intrigued but it's like not like overly like mystical and magical at the same time kind of a thing i don't know I which think. is weird that like um so like obviously the bracelet is like is a catalyst for the powers and stuff but like it keeps bringing it back to that moment of like the train but that's not even where like the bracelet originated from like it was existing like years and years before that too and was yeah. made back in the day but like you know what i think <laughs> what do you, you think know what, you, you just said you know what happened so you have you can't say anything <laughs> No, no, I don't know what happens. I say I think I like no. This I haven't seen anything past this. Like I think I know oh. why this is happening like this. They're doing this like train sequence. Reminds me a lot of the book of Boba Fett, where it's like a way for her to discover her inner power to unlock the maximum potential of her rings. Like Boba Fett and his. Oh, you think it's just a flashback about, or like mm. yeah, a vision? It's, it's a way for her to unlock her maximum potential as Ms. Marvel, just like the Book of Boba Fett show where he just laid in the back of the tank having flashbacks of his, <laughs> like... It's a weird know, analogy. <laughs> to where, he, then at the end, he's like, I am the maximum Boba Fett now. I've had all my flashbacks. They're done. And that's what this is. It's I discovered the train. To, yeah, I think this is going to be a way for her to unlock, like, her maximum potential as Ms. Marvel with the bracelets. It's Maybe at some point like, she won't even need the bracelets. 
Oh, you're right. Yeah, they might actually just completely introduce that. That's that would make sense. Idea either. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, like at some, it'd be kind of a crappy superhero story where she's like, "Oh, better put on my bracelets," you know, like an Iron Man suit <laughs> kind of thing. Well, I mean, yeah. Spider-Man has to put on fucking web shooters. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't come out of him like the OG Peter Parker. Which I actually that route, that love. Means either the bracelets have to be destroyed or given to someone else, or who else would possibly get the bracelets if that's the case? That's a good point. That's a very good point. Very Unless, uh, I wonder if there's like a comic book, like can like a like side character that she is familiar with or you know notorious the with or dog. something. The dog. Oh yeah. Shit. Black Bolt's dog is in oh, all of her comics. Lockjaw. Lockjaw's in the comics. Yeah, the, the 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 bulldog or whatever. The, like, the yeah, his name is Lockjaw. Dog. I just said his name is Lockjaw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's in a lot of the Miss Marvel comics. Well, it's because she's a an human in the Inhuman. comics. Yeah. Well, maybe she, like, puts maybe them the on a bracelets and it becomes Maybe the bracelets are just, like, off. a Terrigen Mist-esque Ooh, thing. Yeah. yeah. If they, she puts them on they cross and over and bring the Inhumans to the MCU, which they kind of already have with Doctor Strange, too. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and one thing I actually said. learned about the Inhumans more recently was actually that the Inhumans... <laughs> the only reason the Inhumans exist is because it was at that point where Fox owned mutants. And so they couldn't have more mutants, so they had so they had to create something similar, create something and they created yeah. Inhumans instead. And so, really, the only reason that Inhumans exist is because of Fox owning the rights to mutants. That's they actually really funny. Mutant and a th th thesaurus, and then just found a different word that meant mutant. That's actually but really at least funny. They came up with an interesting like origin. Story. Yeah, I mean, like I, I love the I idea. I mean, like Wanda's mom, like she's an Inhuman, like she's really fucking powerful too. Um, Black Bolt's a really cool character. They're, yeah, I like it. Yeah. No, it, it's, Was it's it Medusa, right? Medusa, is that the... the red hair? Yeah, the she's leader. she's cool as fuck. Black Bolt's the leader. Black Bolt is. But yeah, his, like, his, she's like his love or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. She oh, ended up... We're talking about the, the whole Inhuman series or whatever. Yeah, she ended up banging... Yeah, she ended up banging um, Magneto, and that's... Yeah, that's how WandaVision was yeah. born. That's just yeah. hot. Shut up. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I get this episode uh, nine. I Pretty agree. good. Now going, yeah, going over it and talking about it. The ending was kind of like I wasn't super into it. The fighting and everything, and they just like I don't know. I felt a little disconnected. I felt a little rushed, and I was like a little. I wasn't prepared, and I don't think they explained enough stuff. So actually, I'm gonna change it. I want to give it a seven. Yeah. I was gonna say an eight. Uh, I would have given it a nine if it wasn't a uh, silly rickshaw chase. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, God, come on. Are you serious? Yeah. What yeah, the that's fuck? fair. That's fair. The I think... rickshaw chase is like, it breaks the whole, like, the whole scene, you know, with all this crazy shit going on. It's like, now it's a rickshaw chase. What? Are you serious? Like, this is, it's so, it was tacky as fuck. Okay, so Johnny, your score was a seven. Yeah, it's a seven. Tony was eight. I think I agree with the eight. Actually, I think I'll, I'll bring mine down slightly too, because I think I'm thinking that the the next couple episodes are going to ramp up. So I gotta I gotta make sure it's properly aligned so I can <laughs> save a nine for some of the. Yeah, episodes. the finale is gonna be amazing, and he's gonna end up dropping a, a twelve out of ten on it or something. Yeah, like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> the and best I, piece I, of media I've ever seen. Yeah, and I refuse. I refuse to give tens because, like, yeah, uh, like ten means perfect, and exactly, perfect. exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, Ken? Something, something could be perfect to you. That's what's yeah. important. That's what. That's why the people watch this, you know, because they respect our opinions. I, I, yeah, I, I'd say, <laughs> I'd say, season two of Mandalorian, the first episode, that's a ten for me. I don't know if I gave it a ten. Yeah, I don't know. Episode's amazing. Yeah, episode is really good. That's so fucking good. You're right, Kavanth. Yeah, Kavanth is amazing. It. Yeah, giant crate dragon, love it. True. Mandalorian, love it. Star Wars. Tusken Raiders, love it. It's fucking yeah. So anyone hard. that's watching this Marvel review, also go watch Star Wars shit. It's good. Yeah, we have a lot Book of Star of Wars. Uh, but the other Mandalorian shit. Mm. <laughs> mm. No, remember, Book of Boba is technically Mando season three. I forgot about that. Yeah, that Book whole episode. Five. Really watch it. <laughs> Just skip to episode five. If anyone couldn't tell, this is a Miss Marvel review. 
Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, episode four. What? What did we? Uh, what was the episode titled? Uh, this one was Seeing Red. Seeing Red. Okay. Well, at the very end of the episode, so the next on episode five, we'll uh, end up at uh, what? In during the partition, I'm assuming during the some kind of train I'm sequence. Just, right. Thing. Yeah. yeah. As, I'm excited to see what it's all about. I'm curious, like, are they going to have a whole episode, like, in that time period? That's going to be interesting. Like, is yeah. she going to be, like, the force that, like, saves her grandmother, like, for, on the train and stuff like that, that we've heard oh. about? You know, some kind of weird, like, time travel premonition time thing? You know, yeah, shit. exactly. Yeah. The grandma's, like, badass and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Meets why... Meets the boss for her. <laughs> Meets the boss for her. That's what it's going to She's gonna fight the evil bitch. That's what's gonna it's gonna be like be Snake Eyes old. versus like Storm Shadow kind of thing where they're all, all old as yes. shit. It's like gonna be like Saints yes. Row 2, the Hitman boss, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah the ja Yakuza Me boss. The band, Kamala. I'm your gamma. I'm your nani. Oh, uh, it's so good. Beta, I love it. Oh, so good. I love the family on that show. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Good shit, boys. Good shit. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks everyone for tuning in. Another Miss Marvel review. If you guys enjoyed it, you know, drop some love for the boys. Head down below to the comments and start some of that discussion. We'll be uh, joining you guys there shortly. But uh, we'll see you guys later on episode five, Miss Marvel. We got uh, two more left, right? Yep. All right. Yep. Perfect. All right. We'll see you guys later.